Hello everybody, I am going to be looking at section A of the literature exam, looking at the Shakespeare section. I'm going to have a look at this question with you. Explore how Shakespeare presents the theme of love in this extract. Refer, refer closely to the extract in your answer. And this part, section A, is worth 20 marks. So the first thing I'm going to do if I was approaching this exam answer is to highlight the key element of this question. So we are looking at the theme of love. So that's what I need to focus on as I am reading through the extract. What I'm going to aim to do is to highlight um, between four to six quotations as I'm reading. But also I'm going to try and highlight some one word quotations. So are there any patterns in the language whereby I am able to identify words that create a specific feeling or words that link to this theme? So I'm going to read this to you um, and then I will go back through and highlight what I think to be the quotations that I would be picking out to approach this answer. Okay. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady, oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars, as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. Okay, so four to six quotations. I want to take five to six minutes to plan this. So um, the first thing I'm going to look at then, I'm just going to highlight some key words. So for me, I can see lots of references to light. Um, so I'm going to highlight light. Um, I'm even going to look at sun there as well. Um, I am going to look um, at twinkle, um, brightness, daylight, lamp, um, lots of references to light and dark in this particular passage. Um, okay, excellent. So now I'm going to look at um, sort of larger quotations. What do I think are the main points that have been made here? Hopefully in the exam, you will be familiar with the extract and that will help. If not, just try and think about techniques. Can you spot any techniques that Shakespeare is using? So I'm going to look at, first of all, it is the East and Juliet is the sun. I know that that's a metaphor and that that stands out to me. Uh, I'm going to look at um, arise fair sun and kill the envious moon who is already sick and pale with grief. So I'm going to think about that kind of extended metaphor of Juliet as the sun. Uh, I'm going to go down a little bit and I'm going to look at these sort of exclamatories. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Um, I'm going to keep going a little bit further down. Um, I'm going to look at this bit. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes um, to twinkle in their spheres till they return. I'm going to think about this line in particular. Um, the brightness of her cheek would shame those stars. We're looking at daylight. We're looking at the idea of the lamp and the bright. I'm even going to highlight bright here. Um, the birds would sing as they would think it were not night. 
Um, I'm even just going to highlight some more exclamatories that I've noticed throughout that tell us something about the tone that Romeo is using in a similar sense, these sort of rhetorical questions that he uses as well. Okay, so once I've highlighted, trying not to get too carried away with just colouring in the extract, once I've highlighted what I think is most important, I'm now going to think about what techniques I've identified here. Okay, so we've got, it is the East and Juliet is the Sun. So obviously we know that when we say something is something that it isn't, that we're talking about a metaphor here. Try not to just feature spot draw me another arrow and think about why that metaphor is being used. It is the East and Juliet is the sun. I like to think of um, this as being reference to her sort of importance. Um, it's, it's the idea of her sort of surpassing beauty. It's the idea that she is almost just as the sun is vital to um, his existence almost. Um, as we know, without the sun, um, we would fail to exist. Not only that, but you also have the light that comes from the sun, um, light sort of being a symbol of hope um, and joy and all of those other things. So Juliet is the sun. He has become everything to her. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon who is already sick and pale with grief. So um, again, we've got this idea that we've had um, previously in, in the play of Romeo comparing Juliet as he first does when he sees her to Rosaline. Um, so again, the envious moon could perhaps be uh, representative here of um, other women who he considers to be um, less than Juliet, um, who is already sick and pale with grief. Again, the idea of using that um, play on uh, of what what color the moon is it's sort of that sort of white color in comparison to the brightness of the sun to personify the moon um, and suggest that um, because the the moon can see how much brighter and more attractive and vital the sun is um, that it is it is envious that it, that it isn't Juliet okay so this personification of the moon um, sick and pale so this idea of um, comparison here. We also have um, what we might refer to as celestial imagery. So images that relate or imagery, sorry, that relates to um, planets and stars, etc. Um, remembering the importance contextually of um, the stars and the idea of the fate of people being written into the stars. Okay, so I think I've got some good stuff there. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to look at this exclamatory. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. So we've got a kind of version of repetition there um, that we could refer to as anaphora because some of the words change slightly. It is my lady. It is my love. Um, and of course, we've got this exclamatory. We've got the exclamatory with the Oh, and we've got the exclamatory with the exclamation mark there again. So I think this is suggestive of passion and um, this kind of overwhelming love that he's experiencing. Um, another thing that I like to do is highlight words that I can use in my point here. So the point that I'm trying to make is that the theme of love is presented in a particular way, is presented as something that's passionate, something that's all encompassing or overwhelming here as well. And you could also refer when you're making this point to other exclamatories throughout this speech. Um, as well, you could even look at the possessive pronouns here, my lady, my love, um, and consider what that tells us about Romeo's view of love or how love is presented by Shakespeare through the character of Romeo, perhaps this sense of um, ownership, I suppose, which we could, of course, link to the theme of gender, contextually speaking, and how women were possessed by men. Um, so um, I'm just going to move down a little bit. I mean, obviously, if you could pick out more from this extract, do. But remember, we're in a real time limit here. So we want to pick out the things that really stand out to us in the moment. 
Um, so I'm looking at this bit where he talks about how two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres. So again, we've got this celestial imagery. We've got this um, metaphor of Juliet's eyes as the stars, but also we've got the personification of the stars. Um, we've got um, that superlative adjective there. Sorry, I'm just squashing that in. This is what happens with your um, analysis sometimes. Um, that superlative, the fairest stars in all of the heaven. So again, um, so we've got this idea of lovers being possessive, this idea of ownership. But again, um, I think there's something quite physical about Romeo's understanding of love, which we might almost um, think of as lust, perhaps, which could be an interesting point to make. Um, OK, so I'm just going to move down so that I'm not taking up too much of your time here. And um, I'm going to look at then brightness. Um, daylight, twinkle, light. I would look at those in terms of, um, if I just draw a little line from here, kind of this semantic field, which is always a really good thing to pick out in terms of your one word quotations. This semantic field of light, which again, um, gives this idea of, um, of hope, of uh, of love being kind of the main joy in Romeo's life here. It's kind of what he lives for. It, it, it encompasses everything that he exists for at this point. Um, and then he talks about how um, the brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight does a lamp. So actually, I quite like that. I'm going to pick out that simile um, and think about the comparison of Juliet as the daylight compared to a lamp, which is a much smaller light. So again, we've got this idea of comparison, this idea that Romeo is comparing Juliet to other women um, and to other things in existence that she kind of overpowers. Um, there's another word that I'm going to use. Um, the idea of this being an overpowering sensation, love is overpowering, um, that the birds would sing and think it were not light, sorry, were not night, see how she leans her cheek upon her hand. So obviously we've got this poetic form that he uses as well, um, which is often associated with romance or the theme of romance in Shakespeare's plays. Um, and we've got this kind of dipping in and out of iambic pentameter, but soft, what light through yonder wind or breaks, but then he kind of breaks away from that um, as he goes through in terms of form. Um, and then we've got some couplets here. Would, would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. Um, so you could pick out the um, rhyming couplet here and think about how that draws attention to um, this kind of sense of, um, it's. I suppose it is kind of drawing this otherworldly idea to the love that he has for Juliet. It's so, it's so huge that it, it encompasses the birds and, and the, um, the, the sun and the moon and the stars and all of this kind of celestial imagery. OK, so um, hopefully you would have time to do uh, between four to six quotations and then some small one word quotations. Try and analyse in as much detail as you can during your planning, because it really helps with the writing. Um, so then what I am going to do is I'm going to pick out some of these words that I've kind of concluded on. So the theme of love, explore how Shakespeare presents the theme of love. Well, I've got that he presents love as being overwhelming and um, that he presents it as being quite physical. I'm just kind of collecting some of the words that I've come to around the edge here, that he presents it as being something quite passionate and um, that it is not only overwhelming, but perhaps even overpowering. I could speak about those two in unison. Um, we talked about the idea of it being um, or the love that Romeo has been slightly possessive, which could link um, to the context of the play in terms of gender. So I think there's um, plenty of ideas there to write some paragraphs on. So um, what I would think about doing then is giving a sort of brief introduction. So explore how Shakespeare presents the theme of love in this extract. So I would have 
Um, and again, I, I teach my classes uh, a sort of a generic intro. Um, but if you if you don't do that, I would just give a brief summary about what is happening in this extract um, and um, sort of a, a quick understanding about the idea of love, uh, about who is speaking in this extract, Romeo, and how love is presented in a particular manner because this is Romeo speaking about Juliet um, right after the first time that he's just met her uh, as he looks at her. Um, it's almost quite voyeuristic even, the way that he, he looks at her and speaks like this when she doesn't know that he is there looking at her from the balcony. Um, so we've got this, this little intro here. I would then split these up into, again, depending what your teacher tells you to do. Um, it could be that you are writing these up in Peter paragraphs. It could be a what, I know some teachers in the department use what, how, why as well. Um, so depending on the kind of structure of your paragraphs, I would be splitting my ideas up, trying to follow uh, the themes or the representations of love. If you struggle to organize your writing in terms of ideas, another technique could be to just do it chronologically. If you're struggling to um, sort of pack things into a pattern, which I can demonstrate in just a second, um, just follow the extract through. See if you can pick your four to six quotations, perhaps try to write four Peter paragraphs if possible, um, just kind of chronologically moving down the extract and selecting that way. Alternatively, um, you could plan it like this. I would say that this is more of a, a higher level way to plan. Um, let's just go for this paragraph. If you were to write something about how um, Romeo talks about love in quite a physical sense, um, if that was the paragraph you were focusing on, so you might begin with the point. Um, Shakespeare presents love as a physical and almost um, sexual often within this extract so something like that I would then have a look and see well well where does he do that so kind of picking out your ideas um, and talking about how um, those kind of come together uh, rather than following it chronological if you if you can manage to do that and um, so you could look at the um, the two fairest stars quotation in there and um, you could look at there's, there's numerous references to physicality and um, the brightness of her cheek um, or even the comparative element as well um, where he talks about how Juliet is the sun compared to the envious moon and talk about how all of those things link back to physicality and how um, that impacts on our understanding of how Shakespeare is presenting love here. In terms of your paragraphs or kind of what makes a good paragraph, really for me it's, um, and, and for examiners, it's really selecting quotations carefully. So trying not to put in huge chunks of information. So if you were going to reference this quotation, just trying to break it down. So for example, um, Romeo references the fairest, oh, can you see that? Yep, yeah, the fairest stars. Then doing a little bit of analysis. So um, the superlative adjective fairest indicates blah, blah, blah. Um, and then go on to discuss the, the next bit of the, of the quotation if you still want to. But rather than putting this full quotation in and then going back to the bit that you want to speak about, I like to call it peppering, like kind of pepper little quotations into your answer rather than including huge chunks of information there. Um, and then finally, in terms of the semantic field, that can make a really nice, easy paragraph where you pick all of the terms uh, in this extract that relate to light. So the ones that I've highlighted, light, twinkle, brightness, daylight. Um, and you could look at how I would probably put that in overwhelming and overpowering. So Shakespeare presents the theme of love as overwhelming and overpowering within the extract as Romeo speaks about Juliet um, in speaks about Juliet using light imagery, suggesting that she is the most vital 
um, an important element of his life already. This is a consolidation, a confirmation of his love. And then just kind of pepper these words in. So um, light and twinkle and brightness. What can that tell you? How can you analyze that in detail? So for each of your paragraphs, regardless of whether you are trying to follow your planning in terms of ideas or whether you prefer to just follow the extract chronologically, making sure that you have a point of what is happening here, how, so an evidence and a technique that is used by Shakespeare to present the theme of love, an explanation about what that tells us, what Shakespeare's ideas on love in this extract, what does it tell us about the way that Romeo loves, um, and, and particularly the way that he loves Juliet, um, or perhaps thinks he loves Juliet. And then you've got your R for reader. In this case, it would, of course, be an audience. Um, and that links into your why. What's the point? What are the audience supposed to, or sorry, how are the audience supposed to react here? Why? What's the message? Um, and just a point to make here, it's always interesting to maybe refer to the difference between a modern and contemporary audience reaction, um, kind of for your higher level answers. And that's where you can think about the context here in terms of gender, especially when we're talking about that sort of possessive love. Uh, where is it that Romeo talks about Juliet in quite a possessive way? How might a modern audience react differently to a contemporary audience? Okay, I hope that that's been useful. Um, thank you very much for your time.